first session of MMPC 012 course code whose course name is strategic management. Welcome to the IGNU Prabha session of management program MBA. I am Dr. Siran Mukherjee, additional director in IGNU Regional Center, NOIDA. Once again, Namaskar to all the students and welcome once again. It gives me pleasure to share this session with all of you today of strategic management, which is commonly known by the course code MMPC 012. Well, before starting the block one, I would like to discuss with you the course structure of this particular course code of strategic management. Well, as you see here, we have uh, in as a part of the course, we have four blocks, block one, two, three, and four. And the block one is uh, dealing with introduction to strategic management. As the name shows, we will talk about strategic management very much in brief, given introduction to the concept of strategic management. Then we will, since strategic management consists of strategy, tactics, policy, etc. So we will first discuss concept of strategy. We will discuss the strategic framework of strategic management in an organization. And then we will go on to discuss how strategy is in terms of global context, that is in terms of globalization. The uh, next block, that is the block two, in course, in this particular course is pertaining to environmental analysis. Now, as you all must be knowing, when we talk of environmental analysis, there are basically two components. One is the external environment and the internal environment. So when we do the environmental analysis in the organization, we do the external environmental analysis and we do the internal environmental analysis. So this is what we're going to study in our block two. And as a part of the environmental analysis, as you all would know, in case of all organizations, all profit making organizations, we have to consider the competition, which is a very, very important aspect of, of any organization. It, it, in fact, it's a very important aspect of the business organization. So uh, as a part of the environmental analysis, we're also going to discuss the concept of competitive analysis. Then we go on to study the block three in this particular course of strategic management, which is termed as the formulation of strategy. Now in this, as perhaps you all must be knowing, might be having some, some brief idea. Uh, as you all know that strategy is basically uh, at different levels. So we have, you know, business level strategy, that is strategic business unit strategy. Then you have the competitive strategy in order to combat with the uh, external comp competition arising from the different organizations. And then we have the corporate level strategy that is at a very macro level at the top level management strategy. So we're going to discuss the formulation of strategy, how it is at these three different levels, at the these three completely uh, separate um, parameters what how how do we handle them and then we're going to discuss the process of uh, formulating the strategy at these three different levels then once we have completed the block three we will move on to the block four which also is the last or the concluding block 
of this particular course of strategic management MMPC 012 that will be uh, titled as strategy implementation and control in which we will discuss like in the previous one previous block we have uh, discussed the formulation of strategy now in block four we will move on to discuss how this particular strategy which we have formulated for the organization how that is going to be implemented and once it is implemented what are the various dimensions what are the various factors which affect in the implementation of or which impinge or rather which uh, affect the implementation of strategy in the organization we're going to discuss those dimensions and then we'll move on to control control as a process in implementation of strategy and then evaluation no process is complete until unless it is evaluated and evaluation is not only always at the end evaluation is a continuous process as you must have seen in your organizations so we will discuss implementation we will discuss control of the process and then we will discuss the evaluation of the uh, strategic implementation process and then we'll move on to discuss the corporate governance aspects of strategic management so that is basically i gave you a bird's eye view of the core structure of mmpc 012 now let's uh, let's see the learning out outcomes of mmpc 012 of this particular course so that means once you are through with this particular course mmpc 012 strategic management you would be having a fairly good idea of these particular aspects of MMPC 012, that, that is the learning outcomes. The learning outcomes would be, as we have already discussed, you would know the, uh, the meaning and definition of uh, strategic management, the concept as such. That is the process of strategic management, the nature of strategic management, the scope of strategic management, the factors affecting the strategic management, the various stakeholders in strategic management. So that, that you will be getting a fairly good idea in this particular course code. Next, you will be uh, you will also have uh, an idea about the process of strategic management. You will uh, get an insight into the importance, the need and importance of strategy in the global context because no organization is nowadays functioning in isolation. All the organizations are functioning in um, in a amongst the stakeholders. They are functioning in a particular environment. And that environment is basically the global environment now. It is not, they don't function very locally. Most of the organizations have wider implications, wider uh, functional areas. So we will discuss, uh, we will know then the importance, the need, why do we need strategy in the global context? Then you would also learn and understand the, as I, we've already uh, discussed a few minutes back, internal and external environmental analysis. You will know what is competitive analysis. You will know the importance of competitive analysis. You will know how to uh, uh, formulate strategy. What are the uh, various steps in the process of strategic management? the formulation of strategic management, the implementation of strategic management, the important stakeholders of strategic management, how the process of strategic management can be controlled and how it is once the process has been implemented, how do we evaluate whether to see, whether to judge, whether to assess that the strategic, uh, the strategies that we had developed, whether that is being implemented in the right manner or not, in the right fashion or not. So all these things, and then finally the concept of corporate governance. Corporate governance, that is who are the various important stakeholders who are involved in the process of development of strategic uh, strategies, implementation of strategies. So once it is expected that once you complete the strategic management course of your MBA program of your master's uh, degree program in management, you should be able to understand all these basic concepts of strategic management. Now we move on to the first block that is introduction, the introduction to strategic management, wherein we, we have three units, the concept of strategy, the strategic framework and strategy in global context. Now, without losing further time, let's go on to discuss the concept of strategy. That is the first unit. 
well what are the objectives of this particular unit what would do i mean by objectives that is where at by the end of the first unit you should be able to understand meaning and definition of strategy that is you should be able to explain you should be able to uh, uh, explain or describe to anybody or you should be able to discuss you should be able to deliberate when anybody asks that what do you understand by strategy so that meaning and definition of strategy you will be able to understand by the end of this first unit in the first block then uh, as i said uh, in the very beginning of this particular session that when we talk of strategic management there are three important concepts one is strategy second is policy third is tactics so we would also be able to understand at the end of this unit what is a strategy what is a policy what is a tactics and what is the difference vis-a-vis -vis each one of them that is strategy versus policy strategy versus tactics see only once we are able to understand the differences between these basic terminologies then only we will be able to understand the overall concept of strategic management so that we going to discuss in this first unit and then as i said we going to discuss um the strategy versus policy or strategy vis-a-vis -vis policy strategy vis-a-vis -vis tactics so it will help us to have a clear cut distinction between these terms we should be able to understand them then only we will be able to move forward for with strategic management and uh, formulation of strategies then there are different uh, different levels of strategy as we had discussed a couple of minutes back if you remember i had told you that there in this very uh, learning outcomes uh, we discuss the sixth part that is various levels of strategies so that also we going to discuss here the various levels the different levels or the various levels of strategy uh, that like we have corporate uh, corporate level strategy then we have tactical level strategy then we have a uh, single uh, let's say strategic business unit uh, strategies sbu strategies then we have the functional strategies so we going to discuss the differences between each of these levels and then we will discuss the importance of strategy for an organization okay now let's start with the strategic management as an introduction let's see what is strategic management well as uh, we have already seen a couple of minutes back strategic management is basically a process of formulation and achievement of objective now you all know that no organization whether it is a service organization or it is a product organization no organization can function successfully or effectively without any objective whatever we try to do first of all we try to identify the objectives of the organization so objectives of the organization the process of you know formulating the objectives and achievement of these objectives that process that very very important process basically it is the foundation it lays the foundation for the a uh, structured functioning of the organization it lays the uh, the foundation for effective functioning of the organization that particular process is what is known as strategic management now i think you would know when we when we say strategic don't you think it means something like important crucial vital critical so the the uh, the existence of the organization is basically depending on the effective strategic management process effective formulation and achievement of objectives is basically um, done ensured with the help of effective strategic management and in strategic management there are two words there's one strategy and there's management management you already know i don't need to discuss this further but what does strategy mean see strategic management is the process whereas strategy is the means for achieving the objectives strategy is the path for achieving the objectives and how do we define this path we define it with the help of the process of strategic management so do you think whenever we try to uh, whenever we try to uh, explain or let's say when whenever we try to define the objectives of the organization uh, do we have only one objective or for 
accomplishing one particular task. Do we have only one method of accomplishing the task? No. We always try to do a detailed analysis of the environment, of the internal environment, of the external environment. External environment, why? To see the external challenges, threats, uh, competitors. So in order to uh, get a detailed account of what is going around us outside the organization, we do the environmental, external environmental analysis, and then we do the internal uh, analysis. Internal analysis is basically conducted. Why? Because we want to know what kind of resources do we have? What resources we had? What resources do we have now? And if in case we are, uh, we, uh, we want to achieve the objectives, we want to move ahead, then what resources will be requiring? That includes everything, all resources, everything, man, machine, material, everything. So in order to do that, we have to have different alternatives. In order to decide upon a set of objectives that the organization wants to achieve in the long term, then we have to identify the various alternatives that lead to the achievement of the objectives. And once we have, we have enlisted, we have done a, let's say, a lot of brainstorming and we try to define the various alternatives, then we evaluate those alternatives in order to find out the best course of action. And what do we mean by, what do we mean by, do you know, is it a best course of action until unless it is implemented? No. We can say that this particular alternative could be the best course of action if we are able to implement, we are able to achieve the objectives. So that course of action which leads to most effective achievement of objectives, that course of action would be considered to be the most appropriate course of action and we're going to select that. And who is going to do all this? Now, strategic management, whose, whose basic responsibility is it? As you all know, in the organization, we have at the management level, we have the top management, we have the middle management, and then we have the lower management, and then we have the operational units. Now, whose responsi responsibility is it? Now, strategic management, as we, we have understood so far, it is basically very, very important function because the entire organization is dependent on effective development of strategies, effective uh, achievement of formulation of objectives. So whose responsibility it is? It is like, you know, laying the path, drawing a track, which all the employees are going to follow, on which the employees are going to tread. So when we talk of the path, then who's going to do it? It is obviously, it is the responsibility, strategic management or formulation of strategies is the responsibility of the top level management. So I think by now you would have got a fairly good idea about the importance of this function. That is the importance of strategic management and the importance of a strategy in an organization and thus, you would be, I think, very much attuned to, to understand how important is this particular subject, this particular course code, MMPC012. Okay, now that we've understood very, very, uh, let's say, a very basic uh, meaning of strategic management, let us now move on to understand what is a strategy. As you can see here, strategy, is basically um, derived from the Greek word strategos, which, which is a combination of two words, stratos, which means army, agos means to lead. Now, strategy, I think you would have also heard um, at many places, it is a word which is used in the military. Strategy for combating, um, uh, let's say enemies strategy for um, managing our internal security, managing our uh, security at the borders. So that's why it basically has been derived from the Greek word strategos, which is a combination of stratos, which means army, agos means to lead. However, this military term has now been used 
in the business environment, in the business organization. Why? Because we feel that even the business organization is basically doing what? Business organization is also on a day-to-day -day basis. It is almost in a, in a war, combating the competition. So which means keeping our ears and eyes open until unless we don't do that, we are not able to know what is going on within the organization and more importantly, what is going on outside the organization. So strategy in an organization, as we have understood so far, is defined as a plan at each level of management. So each level of management will have strategy for what? Why do we need strategies for attainment of the objectives of the organization and realization of long-term goals? As I said, strategic management is the function of top-level management. So when we talk of top-level management, top-level management is always involved in long-term goals, which, are, which then percolate down to middle-level management, which is responsible for unit-level, business unit-level goals and achievement of their objectives. And then that further translates down to the operational level management, that is the lower level management, wherein they actually translate those objectives, those strategies into action. So uh, that's why we say that strategy is basically, it is a plan for each level of management. At the top level management, the plan is going to be very broad, then the, at the middle level management, the plan further gets detailed, more structured. And then at the lower level management, it is completely structured, well defined because it is here at this level that the implementation starts. So uh, and it uh, as another feature for strategy is it is a coherent action for gaining competitive advantage. Obviously, why are we doing all this effort? Why does an organization do all this effort? The organization does all this effort. Why? To, as I said, to combat, to manage the competitive environment. And if we are able to successfully manage the competitive environment, we are able to successfully manage the external forces, then we can say that this particular organization, let's say A, has a competitive advantage over organization or its rivals, let's say organization B, C, and D. So, the organization is responsible for the development of adequate strategies for having timely competitive advantage over other organizations so that it, it leads and it becomes a winner. Now, Gluick has defined strategy as unified. Obviously, see, the, the corporate level, the top level uh, strategy will not be different. Middle level strategy will not be different. And then lower level tactics will not be different. They will be all cohesive. They will be all converging in one direction. Which direction? That is the direction of achievement of objectives. So strategy, according to Gluick, is unified. It is comprehensive. It is integrated. It, it the combines, rather it binds the whole organization into one whole plan. It is integrated. That, that relates the strategic advantage of the organization to the, as, as I said, organization will, that organization is considered to be a successful organization, which continuously makes an analysis and studies the environment and manages the environmental challenges. So advantage, of the organization to the challenges of the environment and once we know what are the challenges what once we know what are what are our threats then we continuously design the objectives redesign the objectives formulate the strategies reformulate the strategies so as to imbibe so as to adopt the the or adapt the changes that are required to be adapted within the organization for successfully managing the organization and for striding in the right direction. Now, what are the features of strategy? Uh, used Now, strategy is used as a response to changing environment. Well, this I have already told you that environment, see, organization is considered to be successful, which remains dynamic. A static organization will function and perish. 
so no organization would like to perish no organization would like to fail only those organizations fail only those organizations are not able to manage in the changing environment which are closed so basically strategy makes an organization responsive to the changing environment it is an integrated plan why because it binds the the uh, the entire organization together it binds all the divisions it binds all the departments it binds all the uh, units it binds all the uh, employees together towards one single direction now uh, it is also adaptable now i have already used this word adopt and adapt we not only adopt the the things that are that are changing we basically we we adapt and accordingly improve ourselves so the strategy is adaptable adaptable to what as i said opportunities circumstances challenges strengths weaknesses so we have to continuously like i think you might have studied in some of the other uh, courses of business management something called swot that is strength swot analysis that is strength weaknesses opportunities and threats now it is not threat threat means what threat is considered to be a negative term it is basically we don't consider other organizations as a threat no we consider our perspective should be positive we consider other organizations to be challenges so we meet the challenges we are able to cope the challenges threat is a negative negative term it's a negative perspective of life so the the strategy should be adaptable to what to any opportunities so that we should any opportunity coming to us we grab that it should be able to cope with the challenges it should be able to continuously develop the strengths of the organization and mitigate the weaknesses of the organization such should be a strategy the strategy should also be adapting benefiting from the external that's why i said opportunities and mitigating the threats protecting the organization against the threats so which means as i said keep your ears and eyes always open open to the cues open to the signals that are coming from the outside if you are able to do that and not only or keep yourself open to the to the to the signals that are coming in but also continuously try to find out ways of combating of managing those those cues of improving yourself as per the external environment that is basically considered to be a successful strategy and then always be responsive see as i said an organization should be an open organization should be a dynamic organization inherent dynamism in the system is essential it is the need of the r if we are not dynamic we will perish in due course of time now the scope of strategy now strategy can be inclusive of object setting and or it could be action exclusive of objective setting now what do we mean by inclusive that is it the, the strategy is action inclusive of objective setting what do, what do we mean by that it is basically adoption of course of action it is inclusive it it combines it integrates it includes the long term goals and objectives and it uh, it Uh, steers the organization in that particular direction by considering the long term goals and objectives what is strategy as action exclusive of object objective setting that is objectives are in any case there we don't always work as per this particular scope of strategy we don't always work keeping in mind the the objectives we are not objective driven in this case in this particular case what are we we are driven by the environment by the external environment by the we know in any case this is the objective these are our long term goals they are there so we will not continuously drive according to that will not continuously work according to that what are we going to do keeping those in mind keeping those objectives in mind what are we going to do we are going to check the external environment check the internal environment check the competition and accordingly mold ourselves according to uh, accordingly change ourselves according to uh, that we modify ourselves 
accordingly we deploy our resources accordingly we see how what our available resources are and we try to engage or we try to get get obtain fresh resources we try to see what kind of finances additional finances required is the present state of finance suitable to manage these objectives if not how exactly we are able to deploy additional financial resources additional human resources additional information technological resources for for achievement of these objectives so that basically is what we call as action exclusive of objective setting now uh, features let's see what are the features of strategy features of strategy uh, we going to study uh, as per the perspective of minsberg minsberg had given five p's of strategy so we define or we study the features of strategy the characteristics of strategy in terms of five p's what are these five p's pattern plan position perspective and ploy pattern that is uh, see i don't want to repeat these things again and again pattern as we have already studied follow a particular course of action so strategy is related to following a particular course of action it is also a plan that is preparing for the future planning means obviously preparing for the future it could be long term plan it could be short term plan so that is also the uh, feature of strategy position now organization cannot be is basically cannot can be generic but a generic organization manufacturing generic product providing generic services does not succeed nowadays because we have to continuously see the customers who are our customers what are their requirements because the customers requirements are continuously changing they are also improving there is a transformation in the requirements of the customers so position so strategy as a as an important uh, aspect of the organization it has to look into the position that is for niche markets so we have to segment the customers we have to segment our products and we have to see whether our products are suiting these customers or not and if they are not suiting then we might even try to develop products and services uh, for creation of niche markets specialized customized markets so as to have a competitive advantage have a competitive advantage position or let's say have a uh, gainful advantages position over the other organizations other competitors so that is what we mean by position strategy is basically a position it helps us it helps the organization to um define a particular position for itself then perspective strategy is also a perspective in this terms that is it 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 helps in creating the vision of the organization it helps in um let's say uh trying to implement the vision of the organization or succeed in implementing the vision of the uh, achieving the vision of the organization it is also a ploy ploy that is tactics used by the organization to defend the competitors so the five p's of strategy as given by minsberg very very nicely defines the features of strategy nature of strategy uh, let's see what uh, how strategy can be explained further that is the nature of strategy it involves both in, in involves both inseparable entities the organization and the environment strategy cannot be developed in an organization just internally it has to be it basically considers both these entities inseparable organization as well as the environment environment internal as well as external strategy cannot be structured programmed routine and repetitive as i told you basically strategy formulation strategic development strategic uh, management is the function of the top level management so top level management is always looking at not structured day to day activities of the organization 
it is looking at non programmed non routine non repetitive non structured aspects functions of the organization because they are the people the top level management they are the people who are steering the organization in the business environment so strategy is never programmed programmed what would be programmed tactics would be programmed because that is that is we are percolating down we are moving down to the lower levels of the organization that is the employees the lower level employees the staff the lower level employees of the organization wherein they are operation they are at the operational level they are performing the same same activities on a day to day basis therefore strategy is not structured it is not programmed it is routine it's not routine and it's not repetitive because it is functioning in the environment and the environment is changing as we have already studied it is futuristic in nature as i said it steers strategy steers the organization to the right path to the right direction it steers uh, it tries to define where the organization would be in next 5 years in next 10 years so it is futuristic in 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 uh, nature it is a combination of content and process it is formulated at different levels as i said strategy formulation is at different levels the very very important crucial strategies are formulated at the top level management however at the business level also at the single department level also the strategies are formulated but these are very short term goals these are very short term strategies which combine to help the organization achieve the long term strategies what is the importance of strategy i think fairly you would have a fairly good idea of how important a strategy is for an organization it helps in decision making and long term forecasting because we are talking of see we are talking of futuristic perspective of the organization therefore it is considered to be decision it's very important for making long term decisions for long term forecasting it helps to manage new trends and meet competition obviously when we are talking of long term forecasting when we are talking of a uh, long term strategies obviously we are not talking of the present we are talking of ensuring the preparedness of the organization for the future so meet the competition enhances flexibility to meet uncertainty so as i said our organization has to be flexible it cannot be static we have to be flexible we have to be dynamic we have to be open to any kind of uncertainty so that is what the top level management is basically for as i said see we are not looking at structured program routine and repetitive activities of the organization when we are defining a when we are formulating the strategy then it leads to financial benefits increased profitability obviously if if we are moving in the right direction if we are able to manage the competition if we have a competitive advantage over if we are gaining competitive uh, advantage over the others or to uh, over our other uh, biz, uh, let's say business um, organizations obviously we will ensure increased profitability for us it gives clarity of direction for the entire uh, it as i said it is it brings cohesion it brings harmony it brings uh, convergence of all the activities so it provides a focus to all the employees they know what they are supposed to do they know that this is what we are moving towards so it then you know it motivates the employees perhaps you might ask how motivate how motivate the employees with why because the employees will be continuously getting feedback they will be continuously interacting it there will be lot of communication amongst not only at the peer sorry at the peer level there will be lot of communication intra level and inter level communication so you know the employees they will feel much more motivated they will feel involved they will feel important they will have a sense of belongingness so all this is due to the development of strategy adequate appropriate 
uh, strategy in the organization. Now, concept of strategic management. So, now, what is basically strategic management? In in brief, we have we have discussed strategic management at the very beginning. But now, let us just uh, quickly go through it. The concept of what is basically strategic management. Strategic management involves developing and implementing plans to help an organization achieve its goals and objectives. So, strategic management helps in developing, implementing plans. That is strategies, plan of action to help an organization achieve its long term goals and objectives. We have again, I would say we have already discussed quite a lot of this, but still we'll just go on one by one. Now, what is the process of strategic management? It is basically formulation of strategy, planning the organizational structure and resource allocation. So as a result of adequate implementation of the process of strategic management, how does the organization tend to gain? The organization is able to formulate adequate, appropriate strategies that lead to the achievement of objectives. It uh, The process of strategic management helps in planning the organization structure. How it helps in planning the organization structure? Because uh, we now you know the objectives are clear in front of us our goals are clear in front of us and in order to achieve those objectives we make an assessment of our organization we make an assessment of our of, of our structure organizational structure for example we are going for some kind of diversification now in case of if we want to do some kind of diversification let's say we were into uh, manufacturing of tomato puree, food product, tomato puree. Now we say, no, apart, besides tomato puree, we need to be more diversified. Why? Because the market does not really need tomato puree now that much as it needed earlier. So we say, no, as a part of food processing unit, we should also diversify. We should diversify into manufacturing of tomato ketchup or tomato sauce. We should uh, go into, uh, let's say, manufacturing of jams so fruit jams so uh, now in that case don't you think we need to design or let's say restructure the organization structure and we also need to uh, rethink about the allocation of our resources because we need since we are going into diversification we will need uh, more more people more specialized people who can manage that particular function of the organization. It could also mean, let's say, expansion. Let's say we were operating within the country and we decide that no, we our market should be enhanced, our market should be expanded. And we should also try to supply our products to the Sark nations, to the neighboring nations. So naturally, our our structure, organization structure and resource, more resources would be required, a different kind of resources would be required. So all this is a result of process of strategic management. It also leads to change initiatives. As I said, any kind of expansion, any kind of diversification, all this obviously leads, to, these are changes, these are big changes for the organization. And these are basically initiatives that the organization is taking. So why do we have these initiatives? Obviously, these are the result of successful strategic management process. And then a successful strategic management process also helps in controlling the processes and resources. Because we know what our objectives are, we know what our goals are, we know what action we need to take, we know who is going to do that, what resources we require, so once we are able to define all this, we can reduce the waste in the organization. And it happens at a very broader level. This already we know, we have discussed that strategic management is the responsibility of the top level management. So it is at a very broader level. And then as we move down, we narrow down to let's say department level or unit level, then the, the, the whole strategy, it percolates down and it keeps on getting 
translated into activities and micro level functions of the people who are performing those activities approaches to strategic management where there are basically two approaches two main approaches in this particular course to strategic management one is prescriptive and second one is descriptive now let us first see what is prescriptive approach to uh, strategic management uh, prescriptive approach focuses on how strategy should be developed that is this is our objective and in order to achieve those objectives what kind how strategies should be developed we are talking of the how aspect so when we are talking of how it means we are moving top to down from top level to the bottom level hierarchy level hierarchical from top level in the pyramid this prescriptive approach to strategic management is developed at the top level and then we move down changing it adding to it further enhancing it further expanding it and then finally implementing it at the lowest level that is at the operational level what is descriptive approach A descriptive approach focuses on how strategy should be put into practice that is prescriptive was how the strategies how we need to develop these strategies the process of development of strategies descriptive is how to implement the strategies the strategies are there so descriptive approach focuses on how the strategy should be put into practice that is implementation execution of strategies that is very very important aspect so descriptive approach to strategic management would be thinking the fact that the strategies the objectives are already there we will try to study we will try to discuss in such a way that these strategies are basically we know how these strategies are to be implemented that is prescriptive is how it is to be developed descriptive is how it is to be implemented and descriptive model is more guided by experimenting with different methods to find solutions and learning from experience yeah we we learn from the experiences because we are talking of the how aspect the process and there we are prescriptive is we are actually learning how to develop not the process how to develop the process here it is how to implement the process so these are the two approaches to strategic management levels of strategy there are uh, three levels strategy operates at three different levels corporate level business level and functional level as the name shows corporate level the corporate level strategy means it is the strategy which is developed which is formulated at the top level management then let's say within the top level management under the top level management not within under the top level management then we have let's say a number of it's a big organization let's take an example that is a big organization and i would not like to name any organization let's say it's a very big multinational organization which uh, which is into let's say manufacturing of sports apparels manufacturing of shoes manufacturing of sport accessories so there is one business unit which is responsible for manufacturing the apparels there is one business unit which is responsible for manufacturing let's say different kinds of sport shoes and then there is another manufacturing unit which is responsible for manufacturing different kinds of sports accessories so strategy at the corporate level would be the top level management which is developing the plan of action a combined broad plan of action for all these three business units together then business level strategy would be the strategies for let's say apparel unit strategies for the shoes unit strategies for the sports accessories unit then the third level of strategy is the functional level the functional level would be the strategies within let's take one unit now which unit let's say we take the apparel unit the sports apparel unit 
Now, within the sports apparel unit, we have the marketing department, we have the finance department, we have the HR department, we have the, let's say, uh, research and development department, R&D department, we have the IT department. Now, the strategies at each department level, that is department level strategies, that is the functional level strategies, that is the third level of strategy. Now, let's quickly go into it. Corporate level strategy. Corporate level strategy, as I've already told you, formulated as per the policies of the organization. They, since they are, they are, they are developed, they are formulated at top level management. So it will be pertaining to, it will be related to the policies of the organization. These strategies would be such which will fulfill the policies of the organization. Value oriented, conceptual and less concrete. Yes, as I said, it will be very broad. It will have a very, very wide perspective because it's going to cover in general the the perspective the broad overview of the organization organizational objectives in the next five years in next 10 years depending on the external environment depending on the competition around it so it is basically it is less concrete involves greater risk cost profit potential as well as flexibility it is it obviously it involves more risk because we are these are the major decisions which the organize at the organization level at the corporate level we are taking so naturally that involves a lot of risk it involves cost it also because it involves cost and if in case we succeed in implementing those strategies and we are able to achieve the objectives the profit potential obviously it will be maximizing the profit of the organization and it will also lead to greater flexibility that means we are changing we are we are we are continuously we are open to any kind of amendments we are we are open to any kind of flexibility they are futuristic and obviously we are talking on the top level we are talking of the corporate level we are talking of the organization level so they're futuristic they are innovative they're pervasive because by innovation because innovation only will lead to something new they are highest level of decision making bodies corporate level is highest decision making and top level management involved with this level of strategy which i've already told you now the business level strategy now we come down from the from the overall umbrella we now gradually move down to individual strategic business units like i gave you the example apparel shoes accessories so these are the business level strategies the strategies which will be developed by the people let's say the managing director of the apparel unit the managing director of the shoes unit managing footwear not shoes actually right word would be footwear unit and strategic uh, business unit as let's say the accessories sports accessories now that the kind of the apex of that particular individual unit now they are going to further translate the the strategies which have been taken which have been uh, formulated by the corporate level they are further going to break it down into their own comprehensive plans they're going to break it down into their unit level plans that is basically business level strategy so business level is basically how aspect that is you know they have let's say the top level management said that we are going to uh, develop let's say 20 percent we we want 20 percent enhanced profit in the next financial year now that is very very sketchy it is very uh, it is just a generic term now this is the what corporate strategy what are we what what is the organization looking at organization is looking at 10 20 percent enhanced profit in the next financial year now how who's going to do it and how is it going to do it obviously the individual departments are going to individual business units are going to do it so the business level strategy or division level strategy is basically translating that overall uh, macro level strategies into individualized tailor-made strategies that is how we are going to what action we're going to take 
what process we going to adopt so that at the end of the next financial year we have 20% enhanced profit third is the functional level strategy functional level strategy as i think i've already told you these are the operational or tactical level strategies which are let's say within the apparel unit which was the business unit within the apparel unit then we have marketing so the marketing department they will they will develop their own strategies hr operations r and d finance each one of them will develop the the functional unit level strategies and all these strategies let me tell you they will all be converging they will be all finally directing they will be all finally moving towards what they will be moving towards the corporate level strategies now what are the characteristics of these three levels of strategies uh, as you see here we, uh, the uh, the the second row shows the corporate business and functional level levels of strategies and the column tells us about the decision that is the type of decision so corporate level is conceptual as i said it's it's very less concrete it is conceptual broad overview the business level is mixed that is at the business unit level still it will not it will be a little lazy exactly you will not know on a day to day basis what is required to be done however the functional level is the operational level that is detailed that is in order to have 20% increased profit by the next um, end of the financial year what we are required to do so that is the operational level operational level decision what is the impact obviously corporate level strategies will have very very significant impact because they are steering the organization that they provide the direction to the organization whether we moving left whether we moving right whether we moving straight so it has very very significant implications the business unit uh, business level strategies have major implications functional uh, i would not really call it insignificant but yes they they are handling the day to day immediate outcomes will not be visible in case of the functional level strategies risk involved obviously corporate level you have like you know if you would remember the dis in decision making also the corporate level decision making has the highest risk involved there was a continuum wherein one end of the continuum is the maximum risk maximum uncertainty the other end of the continuum is the least risk maximum uh, certainty not uncertainty certainty so risk involved is high in case of corporate business medium functionality is low profit potential obviously because corporate level strategies are the strategies which are which are uh, responsible for achievement of the organizational objectives so if the objectives are achieved it leads to enhanced profit business level medium operational level low but let me tell you corporate strategies are nothing if the functional and the business level units don't function well if they don't understand the corporate strategies if they are not able to convert those strategies into their actions they they cannot succeed corporate level strategies cannot succeed time horizon obviously corporate level is as i told you it's a very very long term 5 years 10 years from now business is medium functional is operational day to day basis functioning flexibility corporate will be maximum flexibility they would have strategies would have maximum strategy uh, uh, flexibility business level they will have less and the functional level they don't have any flexibility you have to follow the directions which are coming from the high above adaptability they are not adaptable corporate level strategies are not adaptable whereas in case of functional or operational level they are adaptable now uh, we go on to the next aspect that is strategy versus policy strategy and you know 
uh, you would perhaps think that strategy and policy are considered to be similar. But are they similar? No, they are not. Strategy, as you have understood by now, is the plan of action. Whereas policy is the rules and regulations, the rules and procedures. So policy is a part of strategy, but strategy is not a part of policy. <laughs> policy defines the rules. Strategy plans the action. So in order to achieve, in order to implement that plan, we need set rules and regulations. That set of rules, rules and regulations is the policy of the organization. What is policy? It is the formal statement as given here, outlining the guiding principles and procedural framework an organization follows to achieve. It basically is the guidelines. The guidance, the procedural framework achieves to achieve the objectives and manage its operations. So strategy tells us what to do. Policy tells us how we going to do. That's how it is. Policy are often and policies are obviously they are you know documented. They are in the form of black and white in the organization. Every organization has its own policy, manual policy handbook and policies keep on changing depending on the change of the environment. So friends, we uh, we stop now for today. We in the next class, we're going to continue with the examples of policy and we'll continue with tactics. And also we will continue with the block two. I hope you found this session useful. In case of any difficulties, you could get in, get in touch with us. Thank you so much. And also please see that in your, you would see in your course material, as we move on, there are activities. So self-assessment activities, you are advised to please do those self-assessment activities. They would help you to understand the subject better. Thank you so much. Namaskar.